everybody. Welcome to the Fired Up with CJ show. Today we are talking to Joni Dark Shepherd, and she is talking about her dog and a book that she wrote, Rio, A Love Story. So um, can you hold up your book? Of course. Lovely. So there is a picture of your dog, Rio. And um, let's start off with just talking about your dog and what the story, the premise of the story is about. Okay. Um, the story is about, it's a, it's a family story, a memoir, and it starts where my sister um, became very ill. She was misdiagnosed. She had had multiple sclerosis for years, and she ultimately, she had brain cancer, but they misdiagnosed it. She was on Medicaid, and they rushed her in and out of clinics, basically. Um, one day, I had gotten a call from my mom. She was 91 at the time, and Pat and mom helped each other and, you know, live together. And mom called and said, I need help. Pat can't walk anymore. Mm -hmm. So we took her to emergency room and she was diagnosed at that time with the cancer. And it mm -hmm. was so far progressed. There was nothing that they could do. Um, it was very sad. She went into a nursing home because we couldn't care for her at home anymore. And in the nursing home, she caught everything that it had to offer. In a month, mm -hmm. she caught a pneumonia, she caught MRSA, she caught edema. And shortly thereafter, she was in the emergency room, I'm sorry, into ICU um, in a coma running like 105 fever. And oh, they no. wanted to just put her into hospice and let her go. And my mom was so upset and was begging me, Joni, do something, do something. And I was like, mom, I'm not a doctor, but I'll, I'll, figure something out. So I looked at alternative medicine on Google, on the internet, I researched everything I could possibly think of. And I started finding commonalities between a lot of the things that she had. And certain natural things came up. And so I went to the ICU doctor and asked him, can we just try these? Can we try these on her to see if it'll make any difference? Because she had different infections. And here comes the star. Come here, Rio. Rio, come. Rio. Can you see Rio? Here's Rio. Rio. Hi, Rio. Hi. Rio. Rio. <laughs> Here's little Rio. This is Star. And here comes Romeo. Oh, cute. Guest appearance. I love it. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> they there came on cue. They're like, did you say our names? We're here. <laughs> there they are. The stars of the book. <laughs> so my sister, um, I, I spoke to the ICU doctor and he agreed. He basically said, you know, she's going to pass away anyway. You know, what's the harm? And, and what I wanted to give her was honey, mm -hmm. a, a raw honey, and to give her oregano oil. So mm -hmm. he wrote out a prescription and the nurse started putting it in her IV. Within a day and a half, her eyes were open, the fever was gone, the edema where her body had swollen up like almost twice the size, her legs mm -hmm. and her arms, that was gone. And <coughs> Wow, excuse me. Bless you. And it was amazing. And she was actually mm. out, out of ICU by the end of the week. It was amazing. Wow, after a day? After a day and a half on this, yes. Mm. That's how potent like natural alternative foods can be. And so she eventually, she did pass away from the brain cancer. Um, it was just so far gone, but it was like three, four months later. And we did get to spend a lot of good quality time with her. And mm. that's what, you know, that's what she died from. It wasn't from all these other things that she picked up. Mm. Um, oftentimes I hear things from my friends, like this relative passed away from MRSA or this one passed away from, from a pneumonia in the hospital. And I'm thinking like, I really don't think they had to, you know, I mean, it's my own little opinion, but um, some people say, oh, what a coincidence that must have been. But my aunt got sick about five years later. She was in her 80s. She came down with a pneumonia. After a week, they told my cousin, we can't do anything for her. You might want to put her in hospice. So I asked Anne, why don't you try what we did for my sister? She did at the end of the week my aunt was home. <laughs> it was, the pneumonia was gone. Um, wow. It was amazing. So that, that is basically 
the, the beginning of the story, I, I told myself I have to write and about my sister and honor her because of what she went through a very, very yeah. difficult time. Yeah. My mom, eventually she came down with lymphoma. Mm -hmm. um, I took in my sister's dog, Jabron um, and Bijou. Bijou came down with lymphoma as well. And the, that the kind dog of, did? Yes, both wow. of them. Both of so, the dogs? Wow. Well, my, my mom and, and Bijou both came uh -oh. down with a lymphoma. Wow. So I thought that was very odd. But in doing research, it seemed that with certain types of cancers, they're emotion based. It could be if you're very upset about something, it could affect your immune system in such a way that tips the charts. And then here comes the cancer because it was too odd for both of them to get the same, the same thing. Um, so Eventually, my mom, my mom did pass away, um, but I committed to writing the book. Um, and can you give me a sense of the timing? When was, when did your, when did um, Pat and then your Pat pass away? And then when did your mom start not feeling well? Pat passed away in December of 2009. Okay. And then it turns out my aunt passed away like a month later. And then the dog that I had before Rio passed away. So like within three, three months, it was, um, it was, it was very emotional. It was very wow. you know, difficult. Um, so I had called the breeder, the dog breeder that where Marley came from. And I asked her if she had a puppy that would make me laugh because I needed something to cheer me up. So she said, I don't have a puppy, but and I it's Marley, your first dog that passed away. Is that what you... Marley okay, was the first one. Got it. And okay, got it. after after that, um, she said, you could have Rio, he's a show dog. So you're going to have to show him. And that was my first laugh. I, I just, I never showed anything before. And mm -hmm. I've watched Westminster and things like that. But she's like, you have to do that. You could have him. I'll give him to you, but you have to show him. She said, just take lessons and go out there and have fun. And little did I know that my whole life was about to change. I started taking lessons. It was something to fill the time because I was still so sad and I had become my mom's caretaker. Um, and so she wanted to keep her house. So it was a matter of like, you know, going there and shopping for her and getting her to the doctor and, you know, helping her clean the house and take care of everything. So it was, it was stressful. I mean, I was so happy she was still around though. It was just, you know, great to have her, you know, with us. Um, she thought I was silly to start doing this dog show thing. She was like, why are you doing this? And it was just, it was something, it was a distraction for me. And this little dog who always smiled at me every day and acted so goofy, you know, it was just fun. And I fell in love with him and, you know, we competed in the dog shows, kind of like the Westminster's, but the local shows where you run mm -hmm. around the ring and all. We never won at first. We never won a thing. You know, the people who were showing with us, they are experienced breeders, some of them like for 30 years, we were competing against the number two dog in the country. Wow. So the chance of us winning was like slim, but we kept at it. And I, you know, I was like, you know, my dog has such a nice personality. I'm just going to keep at this and I'm getting you your championship. So I would drive sometimes like three hours one way to a dog show. And then there was the day, the first day, it was interesting. Our breeder came down from Connecticut and drove like three hours. And we went to a show in Jersey and I tried so hard. First, I told them, I said, don't expect us to do anything. You know, we're trying really hard and we're getting there. I'm learning the ropes. Well, I tried so hard that day. I just wanted him to look so good for them. And the judge picked us nice. <laughs> as, as the best male dog. Um, and he actually beat the breeder's dog and wow. which, was, which was, you know, I never foresaw anything like that. So, yeah. and they were, they were surprised too. So that was his first, um, they call it like a three point major to get mm -hmm. his championship. He had to get two three point mm -hmm. majors, and then he had to get a total of 15 points. So we kept at it and kept showing in different areas. And it took me, it took me about a year, year and a half, but I finally got his championship. 
and no. it was it was wonderful it was just wonderful we were showing in a in, in a place and we were showing actually his competition were dogs that were champions and grand champions and the judge from finland picked him over those dogs saying that his personality is unlike most of the other dogs because he's so happy he's just such a cheerful dog so what's i don't know the dimensions i know like the only thing i even know that it's remotely close is miss america where they have a bunch of dimensions that they're uh, rating so what what happens in a breeding championship and what so it sounds like a, do dogs compete in various categories and so this was like positive personality what was the category they do com well they do compete in categories first they start out with um the dogs that do not have titles on them mm -hmm. so they'll have the males compete against the males and they have the females compete against the females and then they compete the winners of those go into the ring with the champions and grand champions and then they compete for like best of breed and they'll pick out like the best female, the best male. Um, but if, of a certain breed, are they looking like best German Shepherd, best? Yes. Okay, yes. got it. Okay. Now the, the American Kennel Club is what we showed with. There's different venues like the United Kennel Club. And then there's in Canada and around the world, there's different kennel clubs. But we competed with the American Kennel Club and they have different breeds. Like you're saying, um, there's breed clubs. So there's an American Belgian to urine club. There's the mm. German Shepherd Club of America. Um, and every breed that you see, like if you watch like Westminster, um, there's some hundred and something types of breeds and they're all recognized by the American Kennel Club. Mm -hmm. um, they have their own breed clubs. And mm -hmm. at each show, they can, if they're approved by the AKC, they can people can enter their dogs that are purebreds mm -hmm. in those categories. So they compete um in their breed first and then they'll compete in a group they have different groups like rio is part of the herding group hmm. um historically they were used to herd sheep or cattle um the different dogs so um they'll compete in that group and then there's different groups like there's the toy group and then there's the working group and um different groups and then they'll pick like the best in each group and then those go for best in show Oh, okay. So there's like, so you can be best of breed or you can be best of your group. And then all those dogs that win in the best of breed and best of group, then go to best of show. Okay. First they win the breed and then right. they'll pick out of like the 20 something breeds in each category. They'll pick the best one mm -hmm. that the judge likes. And that one represents the group. Mm -hmm. ah, and okay. then they'll have those groups. Ah, uh, compete in a herding group. So it'd be like the German Her shepherds versus the whatever dogs that the, are herding The toy groups. group, they'll have the best one in the herding group. So it might be a German uh, shepherd against a poodle, against a Boston terrier. It, it'll be uh, the groups against each other, the best. Ah, uh, okay, got it. And then the best of those groups then compete in best of show. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. And then they pick the winner. Um, so Rio... He, he was just wonderful. We, so we he got best of show then. Oh, no, 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 no. I wish. Okay. <laughs> I wish. He got best of breed. Yeah. He got best, this... of, best of breed and we competed in the group, but we didn't win in the group, but he got his championship because nice. he got all his points and all his, all the wins that he needed to get. And mm. that was more than I ever dreamed of, you know, mm. um, cause he's, he's such a sweetheart, such a nice dog. Uh, but that day the judge selected him. She loved his personality and she just saw him. He was so cheerful and he was actually flirting with the female dogs. <laughs> he was having, <laughs> he was having the time of his life, tail wagon, having a good time. So after that, um, that was before mom passed, um, mom passed away right about that time, um, from her lymphoma that was 2011. Mm. And it was pretty quickly. It was pretty quickly. But Rio's story, he basically, he, gave, he got me through all of this. He gave me some inspiration. He opened up a new world for me. Mm -hmm. I went out and was learning something new. And mm. he was an inspiration that, you know, my family supported me, but 
it wasn't, it was still, it was just very sad, you know, being a caregiver and, and every day, like, you know, working full time and then rushing home and then running the errands and taking mom to the doctors and everything. So to get away on a Saturday for three hours and get mm. to a dog show and, you know, I made a lot of new friends. Rio made a lot of girlfriends. Um, he, he's a charmer. He really is. And um, everywhere he goes, he has a girlfriend. <laughs> and we go to the dog park now. He's got a greyhound girlfriend. Um, he's sweet. But he opened up a whole new world for me. While I was mm. showing him, people encouraged me to try different dog sports and different um things like therapy dog work. So I looked into everything. Wait, I'm sorry. What's a dog sport? Dog sports. They have things like, um, you may have seen like agility where the dogs, um, you have so much time to do a course that they set up. Oh, okay. Just like the human, like they have these like race courses. So dogs have these courses. Oh, okay. Got it. And what they'll do, they'll put They'll put tunnels, these Mm -hmm. like 12 foot tunnels there. They'll put jumps. They put like, they call them weave poles. There'll be like um, 12 poles that the dogs can actually weave through. Mm. They go left to right, left to right. You really got to check it out sometimes. Yeah, it's interesting. (laughs) It's fun. Um, So I I took him to training classes for agility. Um, I took him for rally, which is kind of like an obedience. we did obedience too. It's where you, you show your dog and his ability to do things like to sit and to heal right next to you, to be well-behaved, to stay if you put him in a sit and you could walk a- across the room and he won't leave, even though there's other dogs right next to him. It shows how well your dog is trained and you compete mm. against other dogs. Um, so I tried a variety of different dog sports and Rio is such a character I, I would try things and I would just like laugh because when we did agility, he was afraid to go through the tunnels. He was afraid. No. Of, he was afraid of the dark, but my instructor got him to go through the tunnels by putting a female on the other end. <laughs> <laughs> so he ran through the tunnel at high speed, but if I wanted him to go through and there was no girl on the other end, he would not going to happen. Right. No. no. So I ended, I didn't show him an agility just, just once. And, um, well, he was too busy sniffing everything. Right. So that, um, those, the, these are all the dark sports that you tried out the d- agility, obedience, and then yes. when what he did good with obedience, except he didn't want to do, re- they have this thing called retrieving where they give, mm-hmm. um, this thing that they carry in their mouth. And he was into, he was not into that. He just says, my, I don't want to do that, but he got a titles up to that point, that's a higher level when he has to Mm -hmm. do that, but he did very well. He got a lot Mm -hmm. of first places Mm -hmm. until he got to that part. So I said, you know what, if you don't want to do it, you don't have to do it. We'll find something else to do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we did doggy dancing. Um, (laughs) They have a number of dog dancing groups. You could do this even at home, which was a fun thing for people like during COVID because you didn't have to go anywhere. You could just take videos, have somebody take a video of you dancing with your dog you would have to do certain criteria, like maybe do a spin with your dog or have them weave through (laughs) your legs or things like that. But Rio loved to do that. And after he learned a number of things, I took him, we became a certified therapy dog team. And I I took him to um, two different places. I took him to a hospice and then I took him to a nursing home rehab center that was also a hospice. And the people loved, absolutely loved him. Um, we would spend sometimes like a couple of hours Mm. with the people, um, and I would do doggy dancing with him and teach him different tricks. Um, one of my favorite tricks, there was a course that we took called mimicking and I taught him to watch me and to mimic what I would do. So I said, watch me Rio. And I would spin around and then he would look at me and I could see the light bulb going on. And he would actually then spin in a circle and look at me. And then I would say, Rio, watch me. And I would sit on a chair and Rio would sit, you know, Rio do this. And I I would bow down to him and then he would stretch and he would bow down to me. And so we took that on the road. We took that to the nursing home, all his different little tricks and the dancing and everything. And the people adored him. 
Mm. Um, he made people so happy because so many people in the nursing homes used to have pets. Mm. Some lived on farms. They had dogs and cats and um, they adored him. They were so happy. It was Rio's day on his birthday. They had a cake for him, for us and biscuits for him. And it was wow. great. It was, it was, he really made people happy. And some of the people, um, one of the guys, Joe said, Rio is the best medicine. He was better than any of their medicine. Rio came in one day and Joe, we always ask, would you like to see Rio today? And Joe said, I don't feel so good today. I don't want to see him. And Rio just looked at him, cocked his head, walked over to him, nudged him a little bit and looked right in his eyes. And Joe just started laughing. I mean, that was the first smile all day. And they were just stunned, you know, that he just gave Rio a hug. And he said, you're the best medicine, Rio. A number of the patients really adored him, especially the hospice patients. There was a gentleman who couldn't see anymore and mm. had trouble hearing. Um, we would go to his room and tell him Rio's there. We'd have to speak very loud. And he would just glow. He was like, oh my God, Rio's here, Rio's here. And he would hug Rio for like 10 minutes. He would just hug him. And it meant so much. Um, they would have a meeting with family and the patient, the resident once a month. And I was told that he told the people, he told them that his favorite visit, his favorite thing that happened every month was Rio, the Rio mm. visits. That meant yeah, the that most. totally makes sense to me because I remember reading a report. There's a guy, um, I can't remember who he's a famous medical doctor. He wrote a book about the healthcare system and how there's so many treatments out there that people aren't aware of. And so they had done this research study where they allowed each of the people in the retirement home to keep birds and the health outcomes as a result of P of um, the folks in the retirement home having someone to take care of and love okay. and talk to, it had immense effects on their health. And so I think, okay. you know, when I look at dogs, they're present, they're in the present moment and they're just, you know, they have, they're enjoying the present moment. And so for me, when I see a dog, it just snaps me instantly into the present moment and everything is transparent. They're not, when they're sad, you can tell they're sad when they're happy. <laughs> like they're not like humans who hide everything. So I can see how they would definitely be um, good medicine. And how about for you? Like how was Rio for you when you're going through the morning? So you went through your aunt, your mother and your sister all within like, a, it sounds like a three year period. Is that right? 